Hello, my name is Delilah from the Netherlands and in this video I want to show you how I use my Spooky2 equipment. I do use the Spooky2 equipment to do scans. I know there's a database with lots and lots of frequencies you can use and it saved me multiple times. But I think one of the greatest things about Spooky is that if you have a Gen X or maybe a Pro, lucky you, you can also use it for scans. And especially the high frequency scan has made a huge difference on my health and of the people around me. So I'm a huge fan of that. But I know that if you just purchase these techniques, it can be quite overwhelming because it's with software and hardware and how should you use it. So there's a great document on the Facebook page with the high frequency scan uh, tutorial. It's I think written by Jeff Kasker. And if you read that and follow it step by step, I think it's a very handy document. And in this video, I want to show you the step by step uh, how I use it as well. And I also tell you what benefits it had on my health and of people around me. So for your hardware, what you need, you need, of course, your laptop or computer with the spooky software. You need a generator X or Pro, and I always connect the boost also with the scans. I know people say different things about that, but using the boost will give it a uh, well a higher impact, of course. So when you scan, you have uh, better results because you can scan deeper in through the body. So use the boost and you connect the cable to the high power port. What you do, you will put the tens pads. Well, I always put them or on the area that I want to scan. So if you really have, let's say, like a, a painful shoulder or something like that, you can scan that area. But most of the times for illness, I think it's best to scan uh, on the tummy uh, near the belly button. There are images online so you know where to place them because that's where a lot of pathogens are in your body. So if you scan it there, it will find the loudest, it will find the pathogens that are most important and then you are able to make a program with the frequencies that the scan has found. Now I'm going to show you how you can do a high frequency scan. For the new software you will have to toggle the advanced features. That's with utils. That's here, it's the fourth tab. Then you select toggle advanced features and then you will see that you will have more options that you can select and also when you select generators you will have more options that you can click on and we will need that for the scan. So what you're going to do on the presets tab you will select biofeedback, generator X and what you're going to select is the GX high frequency biofeedback scan. There's also a general one, but we want to select the high frequency biofeedback scan. Double click it, then it will load it. You don't need to select a program for this or you don't have to adjust any settings. Go to control and I have put the cable with the 10 spats on G2, which is on port four. It will be on your generator X uh, screen so you will see there which one you have to select click override generator and I am going to override port 4 and as you can see it looks a bit different uh, maybe if you're used to the old software so in the past you had to select here if you want to scan now you don't have to do this the scan is right here and it will be an option to click on if you have selected a biofeedback scan and what I'm going to do, I'm already going to put my name here. So the data will be labeled with my name, Delilah. And I am going to select the current here. This is important. Most of the time it's already selected current. So you don't have to do anything before you start scanning. But when we have collected the data, we are going to use the other measurements to use it to, uh, well, to select the data. So I will show you more about that later. So putting your name here click on currents and then you can start scanning and it will start scanning it will load the waveforms so the interesting thing about the high frequency scan uh, i think the name already says it you will scan in the high frequency range there is a general scan which scans in lower frequencies it's great as well you will scan the loudest but with the high frequency scan you will scan in the high frequencies and that will 
uh, that makes it able to select pathogens in a higher range. So there's a theory that pathogens have high frequencies and of course when you don't scan it you can find it. And my personal experience is that I started off with the general scans and they made a huge difference already. But when I start using the high frequency scans, I really noticed a change. And also uh, when you have an illness coming up like a flu or a cold, when I use the high frequency scan, I can see results within hours. So that's a huge difference when I compare it with the general scan. Sometimes I got a hit, sometimes it didn't do much. And with the high frequency scan, well, I, till now I got a hit all the time. I saw results very, very fast. When you're done with the scan, this screen will pop up and you can save this one. I just put in BFB and then my name and there's some data here. So with the date, etc. I just let it there and then you can save it. I'm very sure. And what we're going to do now, and this might be a bit technical when you're just starting, but just follow it step by step. You can select the angle and then I am going to click on analyze and I'm going to select the biofeedback scan and a new screen pops up and this is collected from the same data but with a different way of making the list of top 10 frequencies. So now I have a, oh, where did it go? Let's press it again. Now I have a angle so I'm putting that in the name as well and I am saving it and I'm going to do the same with angle plus current. Click analyze, find the scan and I'm putting it in the name, AC. And what I want to do now is I want to create a program and what I do is I create remote programs. So on my other port, I have a boost and a remote with my DNA in there. And what I want to do is create a remote program with the collected data. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to preset scan, click on the home, shell empty presets. I'm going to click on remote because I want to make a remote program. And most of the time I select killing R by GW. There are other options you can select. This is one I have great results with. So killing R J W. Then I'm going to programs and I'm going to put in my name yes. and then you will see that my results pop up. So I'm going to click on the newest results and I load them into the program. So by double clicking it you will put them here into the loaded programs settings. I will skip that one. I go to control click on override generator and I select port 3 because that's the one where I put my remote and then you can see that it has loaded a program and the only thing I have to do now is just press start so no scan because we're not doing a scan anymore that's just with the, the biofeedback scans and it will start itself and there are different options now some people say okay after a day start a new scan and put that data together with this one so then you will have a program not with three uh, programs but with six. I don't do that. I usually scan after a day or maybe two and then the new data I will create a program just like I showed you and then I will just run it for another day or two and rescan etc etc. And well what did this has done for my health and for my husband. We have young children and they get ill all the time and we have uh, really notice a great difference when we start scanning. We already noticed a difference with just the detox sterin protocol. That was already a huge difference. We got more energized, we felt less tired. And when we started with the scanning, just a general scan at first, we started noticing, oh, hey, I wake up with much more energy. I don't feel as tired anymore. I don't have a runny nose that often. And it had nothing to do with seasonal change because I started spooky within the winter during the darkest days. So uh, those were the months that we were 
uh, not feeling well at all. So we noticed a change already and with high frequency scans, I think really that made the biggest change because of that. And sometimes, of course, when you're busy, you forget it and you're like, oh, well, maybe next week. But we notice it right away when we forget it. So we have a great routine now by scanning almost every day. It's just like brushing your teeth. You just get used to it. And if you feel a bit overwhelmed with all the software, don't be afraid. It takes practice, but when you get used to it, it's just like, well, you can just do it with your eyes closed. It's so easy once you know it. So there are great documents on the Facebook page for the high frequency scan. There's a document with Jeff Kasker. Look for that. And it's step by step by step. And of course, in the beginning, you will use the document. And after a while, well, you just can do it by yourself. There's one thing I want to point out. It's about the reverse lookup. This is not a diagnostic tool. You don't do a reverse lookup, and that means that you will find the database for all the frequencies that are hidden here to see if a match comes up. And sometimes it's interesting when you have something and you look in the reverse database, then you will find out, oh, hey, that's exactly the thing that I have trouble with. But sometimes it is not relatable at all. So don't be scared if you see scary things popping up because it doesn't mean that you have that disease or illness. It just means that the frequency is a match. The only reason that you will want to do a reverse lookup is because it will tell you if there is a frequency that pops up all the time. And sometimes that can be important for you to know. But most of the time I don't even do a reverse lookup anymore. I just scan, run the results. I, I really trust that it has found the highest and the loudest frequencies that my body needs. I run them and after a day or two I just run them again. So um, I understand sometimes when you're not maybe very technical or don't have many experience using devices like this, it can be all like, but how does it work? I would really encourage you to just try it and see what it does for you. So don't try to understand it at first, to use it, feel it, see how it works. And I think that the results can speak for itself. I hope this video helped you, maybe give you some more information on how you can use your Spooky. And all the best, happy healing with Spooky.